want to share everything that I have learned through the years cooking sous vide with you. I'll be calling this series Sous Vide Basics with Guga and I hope you join it. Sous vide literally means cooking in vacuum, but after cooking so many times and done so many experiments with it, it means so much more than that. There's a little secrets on a lot of things that you guys might not see it on an episode. And on this series, which I'm calling it Sous vide Basics, I'll be sharing you everything. It is an open book, no fancy editing, but it is 100% in teaching you how to become a better cook. So do you really need a sous vide circulator in order to cook sous vide? No, you don't. I've done it in the dishwasher. You can do it in many different things. Tools are here to make your life easier. Come on, you're gonna cook it in a dishwasher? Does it work? Yes, it works. But at the same time, do you really wanna put everything in the dishwasher for your family? No, it's not gonna work. So you're gonna need a circulator, all right? And here are three of the most popular ones in the market. This is called Jewel and it's small, compact, and uh, I like it. The only bad thing about it is that you're not able to control it by hand. You can only do it with an app on your phone or your maybe your uh, iPad and so forth. This is the Vesta Elite and it is different from the other two. It's not a stick and I wanted to show you guys. And you're able to put it on a regular pot and so forth. And it also has a diode and you can control it Wi-Fi as well. By the way, all of these, you can control it with Wi-Fi. And this is the Anova, another very popular one. It does everything that the other ones does as well. But the biggest difference between Joe and Anova is that Anova has the dial. So tools are here to make your life easier, all right? Don't go cooking your steak on the dishwasher, even though you could. And if you wanna watch that video, make sure you check it out on the card later on. Another thing that is important is a container, right? I like to use this container here. I can cook almost everything with it. All you need to do is stick your circulator like so, put it in here, and one of the most important things you need to remember is evaporation will happen. In the past, I've used like balls that you can put it in to keep the evaporation. I've also used clinch paper. I've used so many things, but again, Everything is here to make your life easier. And the easier it is, the more you will use. So I like to use a lid. All you gotta do is just cover it and you are ready to go. So using any of the circulator that you choose to, the lid and the container is extremely important. And this manufacturer here, Lipavi, they produce the covers for every single circulator. So you're all covered. Do you need a vacuum chamber? Do you really need one to cook sous vide? No, you don't. You don't need it. You can just do it basically with a Ziploc bag. But again, everything is there to make your life easier. And I'm gonna keep saying that several times. When it's easy, you do it often. If it's inconvenient, then you think twice before cooking it. And the vacuum sealer makes your life easier. Get vacuum chamber bags. They are fantastic and they make your life a lot easier. And this is not expensive, everybody. And you can not only use it for sous vide, but many other things. This is great and I recommend it. Now on the topic of making your life easier, this item here is fantastic. Sometimes, depending on what you're cooking, certain items will float. And as it's floating, you're gonna probably find some type of weight to put on top of it. Look, this is a weight. You have to put it on top of the protein in order for it not to float, especially like pork belly, which we will be covering, and anything that has bone on it will automatically float. This is a pain on the butt, because when I put it, it just, it rolls over. So I normally put it on a vacuum bag in order to keep a bunch of them together so that the, my protein can stay down. It will make your life easier and I recommend it. And it is now cheaper than ever. My stainless steel one, when I bought it, it was three times the price. These are the stars of the show. Here we have three types of steaks that you'll be able to find on your supermarket. This one right here is a choice grade. Then we have what's called a premium, and then we have what's called a prime. Now I couldn't find select. It is not available in my area, but there are some areas that are have select, which is even a lower grade 
of beef than this one. USDA grades beef based on the intramuscular fat of the beef. And that, what I mean by that is, you see in there, the more white spots there is inside of the beef, the more higher the marbling score will be. That's one of the factors that they take. And if you take a look at the choice grade one, the choice one does not have a lot of marbling, and that's why it's grade choice. All of these are great, they have different pricing, but most importantly, the fat is what's gonna give you a better steak. That's why this one here, which is the prime, costs a lot more than the choice. Thickness is extremely important because in the end, you're gonna be searing it, and depending on how much you like your crust, you know, that takes a while to sear, especially on the pan. I like to get my steaks at one and a half inches thick. And this is more or less, every single one of them is the same. So keep that in mind. And one last thing, if this is gonna be your first sous vide cook, go ahead and get the best steak you can because I promise you, it will be the best steak of your life. Seasoning is very important. And I'm a true believer that if you are going to eat steak, especially a good prime steak like this one here, you don't wanna mask the flavor of the steak. On top of that, you're paying a good price for this steak here, so you better taste it right. To season my steaks, I like to use coarse salt, freshly ground black pepper, and garlic powder. What you wanna avoid is using table salt, because table salt, you can't judge the amount that is being poured on, because as soon as you put it, it will immediately start penetrating the meat, so you can't really judge. And I always season liberally, because look, this is a thick steak. You really wanna get that seasoning in there, everybody. Okay, like always, you do have to season both sides. Season like you mean it. I know a lot of people say that salt is the enemy, but hey, I tell you something, salt tastes good, man. It makes everything taste better. That's the reason we used it. And learning how to use the right amount is the key. I did season the board, and for this reason, check it out. I just basically roll the edges, okay? I roll all my edges in there. This will ensure that every single piece is seasoned properly. But there we have it. Our choice steak, our premium, and our prime steaks. Three beautiful steaks ready to be cooked sous vide. I don't know if you noticed, but I didn't put garlic powder. And no, 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 you don't do that in my house. You gotta put some garlic powder, everybody. It is fantastic. And this one, you wanna be careful. You don't wanna go crazy with it. Just a little bit. Both sides, always both sides. Even though I don't show on the video all the time, we're trying to make the video as entertaining as possible. Just rub it out. Make sure all the coating is even, everybody. And there we have it. You wanna have a nice seal. So what I like to do is fold everything back so that when my vacuum sealer is gonna get to work, none of this will be dirty for it and I don't have to clean it after. Now, the next step is just putting it in the bag and getting ready for a vacuum seal. Here goes, here goes the choice. We have the premium, our prime. To vacuum seal it, it's pretty straightforward. Just put it inside of your crevices, depending on the type of vacuum sealer that you have. It will have this thing here or not. Close it, push it nice and tightly, turn it on, press vacuum and seal and you're good to go. Once it's done, it's ready to go, no big deal. Now all I gotta do is do the other two and we're ready to rock. Time and temperature, that is extremely important with sous vide. And let me stress about something. Don't let anyone tell you how to cook your steak. You have to eat it at the temperature you like. I like it medium rare, but if you like medium, that's okay. If you like it well done, that's okay too, all right? Everybody likes their temperature and it is important for us to respect. Since these steaks are an inch and a half thick, pasteurization occurs at 131 degrees Fahrenheit for three and a half hours. That's when the steak is completely pasteurized. And if you don't know what pasteurization mean, Here's what it is, and you have to just press pause it and read it. So you see how temperature and time is important with sous vide? It's not only about the temperature, it is also important the time. For these steaks, I like to pasteurize them at my preferred doneness. Do I pasteurize it at every single cook? No, because when you reach two hours with this cut of steaks, or two and a half hours, 
they will be perfectly cooked to medium rare. And if I'm in a hurry, I'll just eat them as is. But it is best practice to reach the pasteurization process. It gets quite complex depending on the protein that you cook. But a good guide for you is an app that they have with Juul. It's free, even if you don't have the circulator, you can still use the app. And they give you some nice guidelines for you to choose times and temperature. Can you put the steaks before it reaches its temperature? Here's the deal. I don't recommend it. It is best if you let it reach its temperature and then put it in. But at the same time, have I ever done it? Yes. Did it work just fine? Yes, it did. This is one of the other reasons that I told you about that makes life easier. So all I have to do is grab my steaks, slowly put it in. Now all I gotta do is put the lid and it's ready to be cooked. Will it be ready at two and a half hours? Yes. Will pasteurization happen? No, it won't. So we're gonna completely pasteurize these steaks. The interesting thing is that if I leave it more than three and a half hours, nothing will happen to my steak. But if you leave it over five hours, then the texture will start to change. The steak will still be perfectly medium red in the middle, but the texture will change. That's the only difference on sous vide. It's gonna be hot but uh, not terribly hot, all right? We are gonna go ahead and we have our prime steak here, followed by our premium and our choice grade. Now you have a few options. You can either sear it right away or you can uh, chill it. And if you're gonna save it to sear it another day or maybe later on in the day, it is a good practice to chill them in an ice bath and then put it on your refrigerator whenever you're ready to sear. Another thing I get asked a lot is, what can we do with the juices of the bag? If you have a good amount, it's worth doing a sauce. But as you can see it, look, there's nothing in there. <laughs> How am I gonna make a sauce out of that? Before we go on to searing, it is important to pat them dry. Why? If there's moisture, you won't get a good sear on your steak. Can you just leave it alone and sear it? Yes, you can, but it will take more time to get that browning. And ultimately what will happen is you'll start getting that gray band. You'll get a good sear because you'll leave it on the pan longer. Normally, I don't like to use this kind of pan. I much rather use a cast iron. Why? Because it holds its heat. But some of you might not have it, so I'm gonna use the most, you know, common pan there is. And if you're gonna sear it and finish it off with butter, you gotta go all out. You can't put a little stick or one tablespoon of butter. Use at least half of the stick, which is four tablespoons for a steak. And if you're doing multiple steak, you might as well use the whole thing. You're not going to eat the whole thing. It's for basting. And if you put very little on your pan, it's very difficult to get a nice baste. The more you put, the easier it will be to baste and they will only remain on top of the steaks the amount that you're gonna be eating. You have to use some type of oil so that it does not stick on the pan. If you are using canola oil or vegetable oil, any kind of oil, honestly, it will work, but it doesn't have a high smoke point. And what that means is that at a certain point, it starts burning the oil and it could give off flavors. I'm not saying it's going to, but it could, and it has happened to me before. So I like to use avocado oil or grapeseed oils because it gives you a more heat resistance on the oil and you can put it as hot as it needs to be. Talking about heat, you don't have to have the pan like everyone's saying, smoking hot, as hot as possible. When I am pan searing it, I like to keep it at medium high heat. Not all the way high, medium high heat. Okay, first thing I need to do is turn on my burner and I'm going to put it at medium high heat. Then what I wanna do is a good amount of avocado oil right there, just to coat the pan, not don't go crazy. Since this is an induction burner, I'm gonna let it preheat just for a little bit. Maybe, I don't know, a minute or so. Make sure you get it coated with oil and Nice contact. We wait one minute. Be careful, you could have a little splatter come at you, everybody. That does happen, especially when you have a very fatty, fatty steak. 
We are right about a minute. Remember, on your very first flip, you will not have a perfect sear. Using a spatula, get your pan one more time coated with the oil, okay, and flip. Starting to get the color we're looking for. Again, one more minute. Right now it's gonna be another minute. I'm timing this out for you. So when that minute is up, what I like to do is now I'm gonna put in a little bit lower heat so my butter doesn't burn. Lower down a little bit and throw in your butter. A lot of butter, that's right. More butter the better. And you baste everybody. We're gonna baste it for one more minute. Some of you might think, Google, that's a lot of butter. That's right, it is a lot of butter. But at the same time, I am not going to be eating the whole thing. All right, so that minute is up. Now it's time to go ahead, flip it the other side. Look at that. That is a perfectly, perfectly seared steak. Remember I told you it is not about the butter. You see the butter left. You might think this is a big waste of butter, but let me tell you something. You paid a good amount for this steak. You wanna have a nice coating and be ready to go. But this steak is perfectly seared and perfectly done. And my steak is done. There is no need for you to let it rest. Oh boy, I hope this camera is doing its justice. And you can see how wonderful, perfectly medium rare this is. Look at that. Huh. <laughs> if there's one reason I like to cook is to share it with my friends and family. Chop it up, go. You tell me. I'm also on my You try it, I've already tried it, they've seen it. Oh. Come. Damn. One word, describe it. Damn. <laughs> you. Sensational. <laughs> That is why I love to cook. Now that we did this one, we're gonna finish eating and I'm gonna sear the other one for you guys on a torch and show you how I do it. The most convenient way to sear a steak, I say convenient because it's also not the best, all right? See the bluer flame? You don't wanna touch that on the steak. If you do touch it for a second, it's not a big deal. But if you keep it there for a very long time, you will get what's called uh, uh, torch taste. And what that is, is the butane will go infuse into your steak a little bit, and it's not a wonderful taste. That's the only thing that you need to remember. With a bigger torch like the flamethrower, that doesn't happen because it burns so fast. But this is a perfect culinary torch that you can see at home. It's cheap, it's easy, and anyone can do it. Now I'm gonna speed this footage up and I know you're gonna ask me, why did you speed up the footage? Because it takes forever. It's about the four to five minutes of me blow torching a steak and you don't wanna watch that. But I'll show you with my traditional music. So let's do it. Can I go? Can I go? Can I go? Can I go? <laughs> Look at these people. These people are hungry, everybody. And that's what I like about it. Cooking is sharing. Love what you do. Do what you love. And feed your family. Go for it, boys. Tell me. You don't have to tell me twice. You tried both. This sure. one is with Come the... Come on You tried both. Yeah. This one is with the... This one is with the torch. Let me know which one you guys like best. I don't know which one I like more. Love it, Julie. So tender. I feel the love over here. You feel the love, Ma. <laughs> I don't know which one's better. I agree. They're both great. The other one is more buttery. Mm -hmm. This one is less buttery. The other one was a little bit more savory, I want to say. Okay. This one has a little bit more char, I would say, because yeah. of yeah. the torch. You know what I mean? It has that. I like them both. Resembles that charcoal flavor. It does not taste like torch. A lot of people are going to ask, does it taste like torch? No. Mm -mm. It tastes like... Awesomeness. 
On this series, we're gonna have a lot of different proteins that I show you how to do it more personal this way. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, this series will continue. If you don't, then we'll just go with our regular program. But I really hope you enjoy it so that I can really communicate face to face with you and show you how I do things without crazy fancy editing, which is what I love to do as well. Yeah, what should be the next protein that you guys want me to show you how I do it? Comment on the section down below. Also, don't forget to comment on this video here anything that you guys would recommend a beginner to do. This is a community. We're all trying to learn and get better on things, how to cook better, sous vide proteins and different things. And sometimes some wild, wild west stuff, right? For example, put uh, Big Mac compound butter on the steak. Hey, was it good. Works. It was freaking delicious, I tell you that. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. See ya.